how do I get this really expensive knife for review? Hmm, that's the question. I've been looking at it for well over two years. Really, really wanting to review it. Bring it to the table, show you guys its quality levels, offer it up as a competitive option, as a more expensive, higher-end titanium frame lock. How do I get the blade? Well, I could travel the route that most reviewers travel. Phone calling, emailing, sending a letter. Hey, these are my statistics. I could sell a lot of blades for you. Give it to me for free. By the way, there's probably a charge. I call it third-party advertising. I can't do that. Never have done that. Won't do that. And my approach obviously stands the test of time. We're in year 13. It works. It's expensive. I had to go spend money on this. That way I can say whatever I want about the blade. Like it, hate it, mediocre, whatever. Welcome to the independent review, not fancy style, of the A.G. Russell AC's Titanium Frame Lock Knife. Yes, I've been looking at this blade forever. Here it is, y'all. Right there. Oh my goodness, uh, it is expensive. $375 is what they list it for in their catalog. If you are military law enforcement, you can call them up and get a 25% discount. That's pretty good, actually. It's not bad. That's a, that's a decent discount. This is a catalog page. I've been looking at it forever. You know, I've reviewed a couple other frame locks, more than a couple. Always in the back of my mind. Get the A.G. Russell ACs, man. They came out with it years ago in a smaller version. It was U.S. made. It used ZDP 189 steel, I believe. I almost bought that one, but I chickened out. <laughs> I did. I was like, even as a reviewer, money coming in from Patreon. I was like, well, uh, back then, maybe YouTube. Uh, I don't get no more money from YouTube. And I was like, um, nah, I just can't justify its expense. Anyways, it just percolated on my mind forever. I finally just went out and bought one, y'all. Finally just went out and bought one. That's the only way I'm going to get it. Here it is, tabletop review. Uh, having it in hand, looking at it, fondling it. I, I will tell you, yes, it's expensive, but damn, this is a great blade. <laughs> this, this is better than I thought it would be. I mean, this is basically going to be a rave review on this thing, price notwithstanding. But get this, there's more expensive blades in the genre. The genre would be high-end titanium frame lock knives. You probably could think of a few. It's cheaper than one of the competitive options I'm going to show you by like 75 bucks. It's still expensive. Do I recommend you get it? Probably not. I'd rather you spend that money on your BOK supplies. It's still fun for the knife show. And it still gives a great competitive option as we consider other blades. Maybe you'll see the ACs come out and play on tabletop. First thing I love about it, and it's pretty much, again, a rave review, I love the steel. S30V is a perfect choice. Suits me just fine. I don't need another higher end. I don't need S35 or S90 or something like that. I like those. S30 is perfect. Particle metallurgy, I've talked about it at length before. It's just awesome. Holds a good edge, good rust resistance, good wear resistance. Comes wicked sharp out of box. Great blade shape, just a stylistic drop point with an unsharpened swedge on the top. Eighth inch thick stock is what we're looking at for this one. And the blade is three and five eighths inches long and about one and one eighth inches wide is what it measures. The tip again, strong enough, but good enough for detail work. Good belly on it. Nice finishing on the blade. Uh, not U.S. produced. It's not. I think this is made in Taiwan. He talks about it in his write-up. Uh, I think it's made in Taiwan. Yeah, it's Taiwanese. But guess who else uses Taiwanese production for their higher-end knives? Spyderco. The... And I couldn't find my uh, Titanium Sage because it would have been a good competitive option. I love that knife. I look for it. I think Tactical Doodle stole it. So he has it. But that, I believe, is made in Taiwan. So it's probably made in the same exact factory as this knife. Which is to say it's a great factory. And the striations on the blade actually look kind of Spyderco-ish. So, like I said, same factory. 
Oh my gosh, this is a great blade. I'm very excited. Here's one of the things that excites me. It is a titanium frame lock. But dang, they have such an elegant over travel stop with a steel insert in it. Can you see it down there? Look at this. So you cannot hyper extend your titanium bar. So it's not a, you know, like a over a, a hinder or disc right here. It's just right there. And so you can't hyper extend it. I still hold my thumb here anyhow, out of habit. There's your timing on it. Again, it's going to be steel on steel with the A.G. Russell ACs. It's, dude, the lockup is perfection. Deployment, uh, no flipper design, so it's a thumb stud to a flipper. I'm going to criticize something here in a second. You'll see it. You're seeing me struggle with it right there. With gloves, which I wear on purpose for this. Uh, deployment is really fast. It is. The lockup is solid. Big old stop pin right there. What I'm going to criticize, and this is probably the only ding I can really give it, is the, the thumb studs. I wish they weren't angled like that. It makes it hard to get uh, a hold of the blade. There's no occlusion there, so they're readily accessible. It's just that they're small, and they're low profile. They are removable, as you can see, for your consistent angle sharpener like an Edge Pro Apex, which is fabulous. But I'm having a hard time getting to them. I really got to dig my thumb in. There we go. That was a good deployment. And you know, rock it. It's harder with gloves. Easier with, you know, bare hands, of course. And once you get it out, it just flies open. Ball bearing in this. My gosh, the jimping is pretty good. Uh, it's better barehanded. I mean, with a thumb, it seems like it's uh, medium, but with bare hands, it's pretty excellent. I love that it has jimping, unlike a uh, competitive option. Well, no, this one does. Sorry, thinking of a different blade. This is 6ALV, uh, 6AL4V titanium, pretty standard in the industry. Standard finishing, looks great. The knife weighs 3.8 ounces, so that's a win in my book. I did put some skateboard tape here for easier and more positive extraction from the pocket. I recommend you do the same. You can see the milling inside the AG Russell ACs. Really a cool knife. It reminds me of a semi-custom, really. It does. Perfect clip. Loop over. Non-obtrusive. Bead blasted. Matches the finish of the knife. Reversible to all four corners. So great lefty blade. In hand, there's no sharp spots. They, it's just really s smooth. I would classify this as a tactical blade as well. I think the traction is good enough. I put my skeleton lanyard back here. And this is how I did it. I just went through one side of the lanyard hole, which is adequately large for 550 cord. Perfect. I was going to get some other frame locks out of inventory. I have sold quite a few, so I don't have as many as I used to. I have to, I can't keep everything, so I do sell or give away the knives. Um, I, the Bradley alias I was looking for, I couldn't find that one. Couldn't find the Sage Titanium. I could find this, and this is the more expensive and very well known competitive option. It is about $75 more, and this is a large Sabenza 21. Boom! Genuine. Realsies one. Great knife. I love it. It's just super expensive, like I've always said. Made in the United States. This was made in Taiwan. Same construction, really. Titanium frame locks, premium materials, premium fit and finish. I much prefer the clip of the ACs over a Sabenza. Like, it's not even close. <laughs> this clip, like I've said, is so ancient. They need to upgrade it. I mean, this was in vogue back in 2003. Get with the program. I like the milling better on the ACs, how the smooth, smooth radiusing of the handle versus the sharp transitions on the Sabenza. The jimping on the Sabenza is excellent. The blade steel is fantastic. The edge is perfect. The blade shape is perfect. The overall design is really, really solid. It has stood the test of time. So phosphor bronze bushing design, which was what was going on back then. I've had this one in inventory for what, eight? nine years something like that maybe not that long but it's been a long time about four hundred and fifty dollars for that you can get a knockoff for less for sure I made a video about it maybe I'll post it maybe I won't really excellent 
really excellent uh, knives. They're not really knockoffs. They're I don't know. They have they just copy Sabenza lines as a lot of knives do. Which one would I prefer between these two? Not even close. I would I would go with the ACs right here. It's less money. Pocket clip is better. Mm. As far as the blade shape goes, uh, I kind of prefer prefer the slender blade shape of the Sabenza 21. There's a large Sabenza. But I still love this one. Classic drop point here. The fit and finish is fantastic. In a lot of ways, and this isn't surprising, it does remind me of a Spyderco Sage. It looks like an upgraded Sage to me, albeit without the spidey hole, just different. But it's using the same handle, same fit and finish. It really does, it's, which is good. By the way, uh, there's your pivot point right here. I forgot to show that to you. Dual adjustable centering. Really excellent retention. Just right. Let me see if I can shake it out with my left hand. Yep, can. So it's just right. You can overcome the detent. Really nice. It's like the premium spider Co's. Uh, it's and maybe you can think of it as a Sabenza for less, because three seventy five. If you pay catalog price, uh, like I said at the outset, it's a lot of money. You could buy a gun for that amount of money. Add to your one seventy second scale aviation museum. Add some uh, very needed items in your BOK and your personal preparation. That's what I really like you do. But I love the ACs. I really, really do. A small downside, by the way, is it does not come with a real box. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I like I rant about the big boxes things come in, like watches, but give us something. I mean, something. I mean, even Sabenza gives us this. I still have my sell tag on here trying to when I tried to sell my Sabenza 21. Couldn't sell it. No one wants it. Yeah, but at least as a box, gives you something. You should always have an insert in there for telling the dude how smart he is for buying the knife. I've said that forever. Um, the players on the table, by the way, very interesting. Oh my gosh, i got to raise the tripod up for this because they're so epic. We have an F4 Phantom totally outfitted from the museum with a full load of, I think, Mark 82s. Look at the detail, dudes. Oh my gosh, that's cool. That's an F4J, Vietnam era. I believe. Oh, that's such a cool model. This is die cast, not plastic. Beautiful Vietn uh, Vietnam era camouflage pattern. All the lettering, the detailing on there. Um, by the way, it's really hard to keep these models not broken. Even though they're die cast, all the small parts are plastic. I have a bent prop on the Havoc right here. So if you do get a museum, keep the kids away from it. Keep cats away from it. Otherwise, they will snap. Uh, F4, F Wildcat. Look at how small it is compared to the Phantom. They're all the same scale, dude. <laughs> World War II fighter fighter from early 19, probably 1940, this paint job, I think. Maybe 41. That's like a training paint job or a um, kind of a flagship paint job. A20 Havoc. It's almost about the same size as F4 Phantom. This is a World War II medium bomber. Really cool. What does it have? Like 650 cows in the nose. Turret. This is a cool model. Look at this thing. I've shown it before. Yeah, time out in the knife review for an aviation show. Welcome to TMP. That's what we do all the time. Or armor, or cars, or I don't know, general toys. Ah, there you go. Just a little sideshow. Uh, I'm going to give the AG Russell AC's titanium frame lock really high marks for everything. Other than thumb studs. That's, that's really the only ding and price. Everything else really excites me. Uh, and if you could afford it, if you got a lot of money, maybe you don't want a Sabenza. And yes, there, there's, there's others out there that are a lot less that are completely awesome. Like the Matt, uh, Ferrum Forge produced by Wee Knives Crux. I'll put the link to this. This is $125. The fit and finish on this is nearly as good. Not quite. Nearly as good as the ACs. This is produced in China and it is fantastic. Actually, that's a ball bearing deployment system there, too. Wicked, wicked, wicked. All done. Thanks for tuning in. Knife show in good health. Golf clap, TMP.